Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. We are here doing a wonderful Skype interview with uh, The Natural Progressive. Uh, we we've, we've haven't connected the last couple months. I apologize. It's a lot of it probably has to do with me uh, and my crazy schedule, but um, I know you're busy, too. It's a busy time for you, but... So, uh, Chris, this is a subject we've, you and I have discussed off camera several times. We've been trying to sort of, uh, figure out the best way to talk about this. And I, I appreciate that you are willing to talk about this publicly. Um, you were married to a man, you had three kids together, and then that man decided to become a transvestite or, or transgender. Rather, I'm sorry, that's an old term. My apologies. Don't, I don't think you decide to do that. Right. Just... Yeah, I'm yeah, we'll get into we'll get into the, the, right. the that okay, they, go ahead. that. Um, my apologies for my for my wording, but um <laughs> right. uh anyway, the that you went through that process and having your husband then go through the surgery to become a woman and all of that, and you really wanted to Talk about it on a human level for anyone out there who's possibly going through that or has a friend or family member and all of the emotions you went through, how it affected you and your children and and where you are today with it to hopefully the, the kind of the goal is to sort of destigmatize it and not make it this this crazy thing and we have to have all these laws about bathrooms and all this nonsense. So um, why don't you just go ahead and just start telling the story of what happened and, and, and I'll, and I'll jump in with some questions. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so I met my ex, um, back in, I think it was like 88, 89. Like I was really young and so super young <laughs> and he was 29, I think at the time, which I was like 17. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, I know. Huge, huge age difference. There, that was a whole different story right there. Um, but we really got along really well. Um, God, I was totally in love with him. Totally in love with him. And my mom, you know, she knew his age and everything. I I disclosed that to my mom and she just said, you, you just better let him know. He thought I was 23. And I was 17. <laughs> so little difference there um so i did i let him know and we kind of had an on and off kind of relationship um for a few years and then we ended up having a baby <laughs> birth control wasn't that great in the 80s <laughs> not and i was on every form and i got pregnant on every form of birth control like at least three forms <laughs> so anyway um yeah we ended up getting yeah having a baby and then we got married after two kids and oh god I mean we just had we had an on and off relationship for years and years and we were married for actually five years we got married after two we were together 12 years total and then we we got ended up getting divorced and most of it probably was due to this I'm not sure um I accused him of, of being gay. I'm going to refer to, let me go back, because I'm going to refer to um, her as a him when I knew. Sure. Yeah, you know, back in the day when, it, yeah. It, when you were really married, it was to a man. So yeah, any of those what, his references, it's okay, I guess, to, that when you say yeah, him. Yeah, in the past, yeah. that's my reference. In, sure. Now and from the time of the change, it'll be her. So when I refer to him in the past, I'm not being disrespectful and I've already talked to her about that and she's fine with that. So, um, back then, um, I don't know. We, we had a, a really good relationship, you know, with the kids and stuff. And we were both, you know, we loved our kids like no other. Um, we just didn't get along in the end. So we just ended up getting divorced. I just got done with it. And I actually accused him of being gay. And apparently, I found out just last time I talked to her that that was a regular occurrence um, that he, back in the day, was always accused of being gay. Uh. <laughs> and that's kind of a funny story because, <laughs> like, well, you are now, but <laughs> because gender orientation 
and um, and uh, shoot. Let's see. There's there's two different. There's there's your like your gender orientation or your your what you believe you are male female, and then your um, what you you know who you're attracted to, and that's two totally different things. So the weird thing is that part has never changed. So now she is gay. <laughs> the thoughts. Oh my god, I'm doing my nervous laugh. I'm sorry. So um, okay, so if I understand, so. Um... When he was a man, he was attracted to women, and now that he's a woman, he's still attracted to, or she is still, she's attracted yes. to women. Yes, okay. Gender orientation and gender identity. That's it. Okay. That's what I meant to say. So, yeah. So, she is still attracted to women, even though she has made that change. That part doesn't change. But the, the things that made me think that, um, he was gay back then were a lot about how he really liked fashion and okay so I'm going to show you a picture of what um, uh, it was a photo shoot we did when we were married and it was just well I don't think we were married then actually it was right before we were married right after I had my, my son and he loved having his hair and makeup done like he just thought that was the most fabulous thing ever, seriously. So there's all these clues that that um, piled up over the years. Or he would buy me me clothes and just tell me how much he loved fashion and and stuff. And it didn't click. But wait till you see. I, he is gorgeous. He he was absolutely gorgeous. But let's see if I can get that on the screen. Can you see? Oh yes. Yes. It's, see, crazy, right? Yeah. That gorgeous human being is is now a woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still a gorgeous human being, but now a woman. And we're still good friends. We get along really, really well. It was really tough when, when I found out. And the way I found out was really hard because my daughter called me um, totally freaked out because she was... Um, staying with him and she caught him trying on a bra and she was just a teenager you know 16 mm -hmm. and just totally freaked out and I don't blame her I mean you don't know I and mean, that's totally out of the norm for anyone to do so yeah she ended up coming here and, and just staying away from him for a while and um, my ex called me just in tears and I just felt so bad because all I could think is your life is about to get really hard, <laughs> you know? And so You're what, what, what then, what, so when he called you, he said, this is who I am. And I did that phone call was, did he say, I want to go through the operation? I want to go through the procedure or, um, well, he wasn't at that point yet. That was another year or so down the road. Um, but but pretty much, yeah, I feel like I'm a woman, um, and I'm I'm gonna start that that process pretty much. And you know, all you think about as a mother is how hard it's gonna be for your kids to go through that, and and having been in a relationship with him for 12 years, I just, you know, I loved him. I did. You know, I had three kids with him. There's no way I could not love someone I had three kids with. Right. Did you, did this did this affect? So obviously you were, you guys were already broken up at that point. Mm -hmm. Was there? Did you have any? Did you question anything within yourself, or did you have any mixed feelings Ooh. or anger yes. or whatever? Like so, how did that affect you? I had a ton of anger at first because I didn't understand it fully. Um. So my first thought was, okay, so I wasted 12 years of my life in a relationship that could never work because I totally confused the gender um, identity with the orientation. Mm -hmm. um, the, and so I thought, well, you know, I was with someone who, who likes the opposite sex than me and that would never work. 
And that was the first thought that crossed my mind. And I got really mad, even though I was trying to be really supportive because this is my children's other parent. I was, I was uh, just mad. I was angry. And I, and I tried, um, like a month after I found out, you know, I just kept, those feelings kept building up. So finally I called and, and told, I, hey, I need to talk to you about this. I'm having a really, really hard time um, rectifying this in my brain. And just, and all I got in return, and this was a hard time because, you know, she was going through that transition and was having a really hard time herself and could not focus on other people's feelings. So she pretty much said, I can't deal with your feelings right now. I just need to deal with, with mine and, and what's going on here because it's, it's super tough. And it was, oh my God, it was, I was so angry for probably a year. I was really angry, but was trying not to transfer that to the kids because mm -hmm. that would just make it harder for them to deal with it because they're going to have to live with that for the rest of their life. And I don't want them to be alienated from their other parents. That would be the wrong thing, you know? And at this time, were there any, when he uh, came out about this, was there any friends or family members? I mean, that started with, had he sort of been public about it yet? And if so, when the public sort of, or, or I don't know, I'm sure there's levels to that. Like, I'm going to tell this handful <laughs> of people and then this circle of people and then maybe, like, yeah, was there any... Yeah, I work people like mm -hmm. because that's you know his day-to-day -day, her day-to-day -day, <laughs> you know now mm -hmm. it's her day-to-day -day thing and and I guess she works for Planned Parenthood so thank god you know <laughs> a great a pretty open group of people place. over there yeah 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 um she has tech for them but yeah I'm, it was difficult at first but they seem to accept her pretty well and she's still working at the same place. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. And it's still so hard for me to talk, call her, her <laughs> just because it's been, you know, when you're married to someone for that long and been together with someone for that long. And how, so I how, look at this picture and I'm like, really, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's hard to go back to, you know, but how, still to this day. So how did you, so obviously there's still some things that are, you know, like you said, are hard for you and they might always be, but how much time did it take to kind of get over the anger, um, with, with this news and how did you kind of get over that anger? I think the biggest thing I did was try to get more educated on the topic, um, I did a lot of Google searches on, mm -hmm. on what it was and what it meant. And it was funny because I had to have that, you know, the lunch with, with my ex and to talk about it. And I, once we had the lunch, I'm like, really, I don't have that many questions other than did I really waste my time, you know, being with you or, and it's kind of funny because even my mom, who is a super staunch Republican, right? She actually told my ex that if, if, if he was open back then about what was going on, she thinks that we still would have been together. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> wow. I know. Right. Is, and I don't know because, you know, it's still the same person. It's, is it is the same person. I don't know. That wouldn't, I don't know, that probably wouldn't function correctly for me, but it was, you know, I still love that person because it's the same person. It's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's just such an odd thing, but my kids have adjusted really well. In fact, two of them are living with her right now. Hmm. Um, and my son's girlfriend and, and her two kids are living over there and they're just up the street from us, which is really nice. I, I wish I could fit them in my house, but I have my other daughter and <laughs> we have we live communal live. That's the only way we can afford what we do here. Right. Right. <laughs> so, you know, 
got to have the horses and all that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, that's beyond the point. I'm digressing. Did but you? But did you then? If were, were there any people that you know were bent out of shape or said offensive things to you or whatever? And then, if if you did hear some of those comments, how did you deal with them? Oh, that happens still, of course. Um, my my current husband was not really thrilled about it. <laughs> and said all kinds of mean things that I'm not going to repeat. But, you know, he was raised strict Christian and all that, so, or I really wasn't. And I I don't understand that ideology of, you know, this person's bad because they, they're they this way or that way. I don't, I don't get it. It's, it's what you do, not who you are. So, yeah, I had a really hard time with, with my current husband and... Um, some of my family members, but most of them are okay with it. I mean, my, my brother-in-law, he wasn't really crazy about it. He says nasty things about it. It's just wrong. It's just terrible. It's not what you do. It's, yeah, it's just sick. You know, there's some people that just don't get it, but there's some people that say it's a mental disease or whatever. mm, mm -hmm. What was, so what would you say to somebody that's, in a similar position to you that's watching this video that's maybe just found out and they're, they're about a significant other or a, a spouse, a sibling, whatever, a good friend and they're kind of they're kind of freaking out. What would what would you I would just say be supportive and, and get informed on on what this is. Mm -hmm. I because you don't go through all of that for nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean there is something that is way powerful in them and they're not being themselves and they feel like they're not going to be whole or themselves until they do this. And they spend a ton of money and a ton of time and go through a lot of pain and a lot of ridicule and harassment and all, they wouldn't do that for nothing. Mm -hmm. And so all you can do is be supportive. All you can do is, is, is just have their back and, and you're, and if you have kids with them, that's that's a whole other level. But thank God my kids are are raised really open minded. Um, they were always raised open minded by both of us. We did a good job raising our kids, I think. So they they didn't handle it probably as as bad as a lot of kids would have handled it. Are there any sort of like? support groups or anything like that for anyone to just like that are going through what you're going through because I think that's I, I mentioned that I, I've never gone through this but I just I and many friends of mine have found that support groups for various things I just mm -hmm. me personally they've helped a lot when you feel like oh I'm all alone or I'm the only person going through this I must be nuts or whatever the thing is that when you mm -hmm. talk to other people are like well I felt that same way and did you find any resources like that um, I, I actually looked and I couldn't find any, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I also looked for resources of people that, to help with workers rights and all that stuff. And I didn't find anything really there either when I was going through my lawsuit that I went through. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes you just got to tough it out yourself and just do the best you can, I guess. Well, one thing I would, I, I applaud you for that. And I would say to anybody out there watching you know, maybe, sub, maybe start a support group. I don't know. I think, you know, the history of them, if you go back to the history of Alcoholics Anonymous, so it was, it was uh, Bill W. Bill Wilson and this guy, Dr. Bob, and it was in the late 30s, and they were in Akron, Ohio, and they started getting together at this house. It's actually a museum. The, the AA wow. Museum is in Akron, Ohio. I go to museums when I travel on the road, and I came across this museum 20-some years ago. And completely coincidentally, there are 12 steps up to the front door. Complete coincidence. Oh, wow. That's weird. <laughs> um, and these two guys were both alcoholics, and they would sit over pots of coffee and try to keep each other sober. And at the time, everyone was like, well, that's insane. You would never talk to another alcoholic about staying sober. It's completely insane. And from that, these two guys started this thing in the late thirties. Now there's 12 step groups for everything. I mean, gambling, sex, I mean, whatever you name it, it's out there. And so, um, I've seen the positive impact of that. And I, it's, it's one of the things 
I think that's important with anything building community. It's one of the things I talk about here with Political Vigilante and when I do the super chats, it's about us progressives not feeling we all feel alone and crazy. We're out there either in some red state or some blue state. We're surrounded by neocons or neoliberals and we all feel nuts and then we get together and we go, oh wow, like that's the thing. I just did the Jimmy Dore show last night in Chicago and flew back today and there was 600 people at this theater in Chicago all like, oh wow, I'm not alone. I so, love that. I saw the little video you did there. I'm like, that's not fair because you're not coming to Utah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. We might come there. There could be some shows in Salt Lake City. You never I know. Would buy a ticket if I, you came to Utah. I'm I like, know. You have to buy the ticket first. <laughs> um, but I say that as getting back to this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because I, you're right. What, 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 it is good to have a community that you can relate to. Yeah. Because... I agree. I, I've never gone through what you went through and I'm sitting here thinking like if I had a significant other or just like, it'd be one thing if like a lifelong guy friend of mine came forward and said, Hey man, I'm, I'm gay. I'd be like, okay, fine. that's whatever. Yeah, whatever, whatever. But someone you had a relationship with, it just makes you question everything about your sexuality, everything period. It's like, wow you know, what went wrong there. And then to top it off, um, like I chose him over back then, him over this pilot, like guy that I kind of started seeing before I found out I was pregnant. Like we had kind of broke up and I went to see this other guy and he actually wanted, wanted the baby to be his when I broke up with him and told him I was pregnant with the other guy's baby and I was told I'm still in love with this guy like I will never get over this guy ever 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 and I feel like I kind of lost that so that made made me more angry because I kept going back to that uh -huh. which has nothing to do you know it doesn't matter who it would you know or that part doesn't have matter you know really could have been any anything I I just felt obligated to be with the person was the father of my children, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was, I felt like it was a mistake after that. Like that just kept going through my mind. That was such a huge mistake. I could have went with the other guy, but I didn't want to be the girl that was, had three different kids with three different guys. You know, uh -huh. you never uh -huh. do that. Right. <laughs> I mean, people in Utah do it all the time, but <laughs> I didn't want to be that person. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, you know, I just, you, know, you have kids, you make it work. It's kind of the did, way I felt. Did any of your kids react strongly? I mean, it sounds like everyone's okay with it now, but did any, like, kid react way differently than one of your other kids? And, and if so, or uh, how did you deal with that? My youngest is the one that had the hardest time. She's the one that, that started, you know, found out and called me right after and but yeah she had a hard time for a while and I just kept telling her you know it's the same person still your parent um back then it was still he so he loves you it's going through this this is something I feel strongly about and not something really that there's any control over um I don't know. I just, I was trying to be super supportive of the other parent because I just don't think it, it's very productive to make them the bad guy, you know, right, because right. of what they're going through. So, and I didn't, I mean, I was angry at the time, but I was just really super trying to keep my kids calm and say, it's okay, just take a step back and, and we'll figure this out. Um, you're fine, you know, just stay with me for a while and you're just, you'll be fine. Just let's figure this thing out. Let, let, <clears throat> still him back then, so let him figure it out. And eventually everybody calmed down. I mean, all the kids still have a good relationship, especially that one. That one has probably the best relationship with her now. They ride um, bullet bikes, they did bullet bike racing together, <laughs> which is not something I'm into. She used to do horseback riding and 
barrel racing with me, but now she's doing bullet bikes. So I guess horses weren't fast enough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to hear. I mean, that's that's like a lot of things can can be worked through, provided all parties are willing to to yeah. listen and and acknowledge what the other person is feeling. If somebody just goes, "Oh, you shouldn't feel that way," or whatever, and that's when that's when divides get wider. Um, let me ask you this too, because we talked a little bit about it off camera. You, you're noticing, and I think I have to I think many people are that more people are feeling are coming forward and saying, you know, I want to go through this change. And I know just way more people personally that have done it in the last five years, 10 years or so than all my adult years or child years prior. What, why do you think that is? I just think it's becoming more socially acceptable. I just, I think it's more broad and more people are, are just making that change. And I think that needs to continue to be okay. And where I work, well, I work all over the place. I don't work in one place. I work everywhere, but I'm seeing more and more just openly, you know, out there and it, just makes me happy to see that they're able to do that in this red state, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they're not being abused, but, and they are getting jobs being open about that. I, that, that just makes me feel really good that there's some progress. Um, I think it's just social progress. People just becoming more open, more accepting. Yeah. It's like anything it's, it's, you know, mm -hmm. uh, interracial couples or, you know, with, uh, women, you know, having you know from from 70 80 year women getting jobs and being in the workplace and all these things that mm -hmm. that um weren't common i think people just need to be see see it be more comfortable with it and when it's portrayed in in film and tv as well um and as the person's not a freak or a whatever it's just hey this is this is who they are it is what it is yeah and they say it's not natural but I'm around animals a lot, and I see a lot of male animals acting like females, and a lot of females acting like males. <laughs> it's pretty natural. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's an interesting point you bring up because I remember there was a study of they uh, like a I don't know what that's called of of monkeys. Oh, monkeys are crazy. <laughs> yeah, and there they were there was there was uh, gay monkeys within this yeah, com gay monkeys, communities. Yeah buy monkeys there yeah so it's like okay <laughs> if they're just and how are we that different you yeah. know we, sh we share a lot of the same chromosomes as them i know if you're religious i can see why they have that prejudice because they think man is so special but we're just another animal yeah we're just animals that's all we are i i don't think that humans are that special in fact i think we have a flaw <laughs> we can be evil where animals can't yeah we can absolutely be evil the only time an animal's evil is when it was abused by an, a human <laughs> so, yeah well that doesn't make them evil they're just being protective right that's different. that's true they're not they're even just, being evil they're just protecting yeah. themselves yeah it's it's an excellent point that's an excellent okay. point well uh, I'll get out of trouble for that. <laughs> um, i really uh before we end here is there anything else you want to add or is there anything else you want to know? <laughs> you know, I think you really went through it, at least for me, just kind of thinking hypothetically if I was in your shoes or if I just had a good friend or something like that, you know, who said, hey, because I think to me, like somebody saying they're gay, I'd be like, whatever. If somebody said, I want to have the surgery and change my sexual identity. That would be, that would be probably harder for it's me to shocking. deal with it is shocking because i would just be like shocking. shock to the system yeah especially once you were married to them and it's just it's crazy i don't know i i was shocked when i had a friend really like my very 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 best friend she once told me what would you do if someone you knew really well was gay and this was ba way back in the 80s so i had no concept i'm in utah we don't deal with that really you know you're like, I don't know, it'd be fine, I guess, whatever. And then I started thinking if it was her and we'd been 
I'd stay over at her house all the time and stay in the same bed and all that. And so and I'm like, oh my God, does she have a thing for me <laughs> or right. something? Which is ridiculous, right? You know, but it ended up being her mom <laughs> that, that she was right. trying to tell right. me. And so we were really close. And then my boss, I had a boss that was like the same, I found out later was, was actually a lesbian and we got along famously. And now I remember uh, figured out why she would call me at three o'clock in the morning and just talk and take me out to dinner and stuff like that so it's like it is what it is but I love her to death still also but oh yeah it's just weird you know it's 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 kind of an adjustment that we're making in society getting Mm -hmm. used to all these um the it wasn't like something you talked about way back when you didn't talk about Mm -hmm. it you didn't you didn't see it. It was always in the shadows. Um, I, I remember when I was 17, I, I went out to California and, and sold encyclopedias. <laughs> it was a way to travel. I know, actually, I tried to sell encyclopedias, never sold one, and <laughs> door to door. But there was this, this guy that was, was in the group with us, and he, he was like, yeah, there's a gay bar in San Francisco. And I'm like, there's no such thing, because I was so in <laughs> back then like there's no such thing as a gay bar <laughs> and he's like oh yeah i'll show you so he drives me over the san francisco bridge it was fourth of july so i got to see the fireworks going off over it that's that was just the cool part <laughs> with fireworks going over and then we go in to town and he takes me through a gay bar where some guy thinks that i'm a trans or something i don't know what but he's trying to pick up on me and he's gay as hell so he thinks that i'm that I guess right I always right. had really strong features so and I had my hair all pulled back in a ponytail and he's like look I have a ponytail too just like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh it was so funny but I just went in one door and out the other and I was so scared of uh, mm-hmm. because I didn't know you know not knowing really is what makes you afraid and That's, then I went yeah. to cosmetology school and I got to know a few of them in cosmetology school and that totally changes your whole perception once you know you know the closer you are and then you understand and my merchandiser um my employee under me um is also gay Mm -hmm. and i've known him since he was a baby because he was one of my best friend's sons so and i found out just a couple few years ago that he was gay but oh my god you know, I get a lot of education from him on that issue. <laughs> right, right. And it's just more common. And, and once it's more common, people start to yeah. to normalize it and they're not afraid of it as much. I guess. I, yeah, I think you said it. It's, it's not being exposed to something is where all the fears and the misconceptions come from. And I've seen that throughout my life on so many different things. And from my own views and then you know living moving from madison wisconsin which is a primarily white sort of liberal college town to evanston Mm -hmm. illinois where my junior high was 60 percent black my high school was 40 percent and seeing that whole thing and going through that in the 80s and then going to college and i just saw so many perceptions i remember i was a it was in college and we were there's this big college apartment complex where there's like all these different parties and I was with a bunch of guys that I'd met in college and they were all white dudes who came from all white high schools, right? And there was this music playing like house and rap music. Utah. Yeah, Utah, <laughs> right. They were from Minnesota. They were from, they, if, they were living, if they lived near a big city, they were in an all white suburb um, or they were just from a small town. Um, and I remember there's this one apartment and I heard all this like house music and rap music and I was like, oh, let's go there because that's what I listened to at my high school. You know, I was on the football team and we would be beatboxing and stuff on the, in the, in the locker room and stuff like that. That's just, that's what I grew up in high school listening primarily to black music. Um, wow. And I remember going, well, let's go, let's, oh, let's go in there. And they were all like, oh, you know, like, oh no, everyone, everyone's black. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? Who cared? What do you mean? Yeah. Like, I was what? like, <laughs> and, um, and then meeting you know, black people that grew up in all black communities, their view of white people was off. And I just started to realize that's just a human thing. If everyone's kind yeah, of, si- yeah. yeah, 
you just don't have exposure. And once you get exposure to different things, and I think that's one of the upsides of the internet. There's obviously some downsides, but the upside is we can sit here. We're two totally different worlds and backgrounds, and we're having a video conversation, and we're sharing ideas. Um, that's cool. <laughs> and that, that's, that's amazing. That is an amazing use of this technology. So I really, um, I really thank you for – this was your idea to, to talk about this and share your experience. Obviously, a very personal thing, a very emotional thing, a thing that was very – painful at first and the fact that it's now you get you get along with your ex and and you and her you know have a wonderful relationship and your kids have a wonderful relationship it shows that anyone out there that's watching if you are if something like this is happening to somebody you know or you're going through this and you feel like you're you're, oh my god everything's this is all crazy i can't handle it it sounds like it's something that you can get through direct message me if you want to talk all right (laughs) totally